Hi guys. Hi. How are you all? Great. So, um, what we are doing today is we are basically running with a neat practice session. And uh, when we talk about need practice session, we are just going to take a look at uh, certain aspects of need, discuss the paper pattern, uh, take a quick run through about it, and then uh, go forward to solving questions from the last year's need paper. Okay, so we'll take a look at those questions. So as we solve the questions, we'll do doubt solving, and we'll 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 run through the concepts again. Okay, so let's first take a look at how the pattern of need. Okay. Okay, so we have 45 questions in physics, we have 45 questions in chemistry, and then we have 90 questions in bio, isn't it? Yes. Now, when we talk about this, uh, how many questions do you have in total? Yeah. Uh, so, all these questions, when we, when we actually take a look at the time that is allotted to us, we get one minute per question. Okay, and each question is awarded with four marks, isn't it? And negative one mark, right? So when you answer a question incorrectly, what actually happens is you don't just lose a mark, okay? You don't just lose one mark. You're basically losing five whole marks. Why? Because you're not going to get four marks because you have answered the question incorrectly. But at the same time, you are also losing another mark from the ones that you have already gained, right? So because of the negative marking, your uh, marking comes down to a very great extent. So do not mark the questions unless and until you are absolutely sure about the answers. That is the first and foremost thing. Okay. Now, when we talk about working out the questions, see, there will be questions which will be direct. So you'll be able to answer the questions directly. You look at the question and within a few seconds, you'll be able to answer it. Okay. Now, when we talk about such questions, these questions will take less time, less than a minute. But remember, in that minute, you have to read the question, arrive at the correct answer and also fill up the OMR sheet right also fill up what also fill up the omr sheet so all these three things are supposed to happen under the minute so when you are working out on a question and if you realize that you are taking a minute or longer than a minute do not waste your time on that question leave that question and move ahead okay because once you go through the questions that you can answer under the minute, you can answer directly. These questions will save you a lot of time. You know, the seconds will just get added on at the end. And these questions will save a lot of time for you where you can use the saved time on the questions that you have skipped. Got it? So this is how you will work out on the questions. So I have taken a few questions from previous year's paper, like 2020 NEAT paper. Let us take a look at those questions, work out the answers and try to understand how quickly we can answer the question. Okay. So let us take a look at the question paper. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So look at this question over here. Presence of, uh, are you all able to see the question paper clearly? Fine, so first question is, uh, presence of which of the following conditions in urine is indicative of diabetes mellitus? Now diabetes mellitus, we know that it is sugar diabetes. That means there is excess of sugar. Okay, now looking at this question, I'm sure you might have already arrived at the answer. Because if we look at the question, there is only one option which screams the answer in your face. Isn't it? Yeah. Can someone tell me the answer, Srishti? A. Right? Correct? A. So, ketonuria and glycosuria. Now, let us actually look at the background of it. So, how or why ketonuria or glycosuria is coming. So, see, when a person is suffering from diabetes mellitus, the sugar load in the blood is too high and recall that the pct the proximal convoluted tubule of the nephron 
carries out selective reabsorption which is based upon what which is based upon the concentration of the substances in the blood so if the blood has a lot of amount of sugar do you think the proximal convoluted tubule is going to reabsorb sugar it won't it won't reabsorb the sugar from the glomerular filtrate because of which it is going to allow the sugar to pass on and that is the reason there will be glucose present in the urine now where is ketone urea coming from see the blood glucose level is also high because the body cells are unable to utilize glucose so if the body cells are unable to utilize glucose as a source of energy what are they going to do they are going to break down fats and proteins and when fats and proteins are broken down ketone bodies will be released in the urine so that is why presence of ketone urea and glycose urea is an indicative of diabetes mellitus now let us look at the second question the enzyme enterokinase helps in the conversion of what okay enzyme enterokinase okay can someone give me the answer fatima Pepsinogen into pepsin. Pepsinogen into pepsin. Is it? Trypsinogen. Trypsinogen into trypsin. Isn't it? Yeah. So recall that trypsinogen is secreted in its inactive form by what? By the pancreas, isn't it? And it is activated in the duodenum. It's a protease. Proteases are released in inactive form, aren't they? Yeah. So these proteases are activated at the site, and enterokinase is an enzyme which converts inactive trypsinogen to active trypsin. Are you following that? And this enterokinase is secreted by what? This enterokinase is secreted by the walls of the duodenum, isn't it? So if you look at these two questions, weren't you able to arrive at the answers under a minute? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was very quick, isn't it? So, would you be wasting a lot of time on on such questions? You won't, because you are able to uh, arrive at these questions under a minute. So, you'll be saving a lot of time over here. Now, let us take a look at how to work out on uh, match the column sections. Now, match the column section. Question number three: Match the column. Okay. So, plus now there are four options that you have to match. Now, how will you try to come at the answer under a minute? Okay. Look at the option that you are absolutely sure about. Are you following me? Are you following what I'm saying? Look at the match that you are absolutely sure about. Okay, so for example, I can say that I'm absolutely sure about placenta. Okay, now placenta I can match with human chorionic gonadotropin. Yeah, so my first match is supposed to be A two. Are you following that? Now I will look for A two in all the four options. So see, A is giving me A three, B is giving me A two. So I have an option over here. Am, do I have any other option that shows A two? No. C and D are also showing something separate. Now since I have already arrived at the answer, should I? I I can perform. I I can perform a check. Okay. I can simply confirm my answer. So, for example, let's let's talk about zona pellucida. Where do we find the zona pellucida? We find it in the ovum, right? So, B should be three, the layer of the ovum. Two answers I have corrected. Do they satisfy my requirement? Do they? Yep. Yeah. Yes. So, because of this, what will happen? I can arrive at my answer under the minute again. I don't have to sit and match all of the four, and neither do I have to. Look through A, B, C, D, all of them to find the correct match. Look for the answer that you are absolutely sure about, and you'll be able to work on it. Are you following this? Yes, Great. Yes, Question number four: Ray florets. Now, what are ray florets? Let's let's first discuss about that. Ray florets are found in flowers like sunflower. Okay. Now, when we talk about the sunflower. You, you the central disc of the sunflower actually has the real flowers the ray florets the yellow petals that you see are actually just the corona of the sunflower which is attracting the insects for pollination are you following that so those pet those that corona the the layer of the petal like structures that we have in the sunflower are actually not the petals of the sunflower 
okay or the, the sunflower flowers those are florets which are present on the central disc and since they are present on the central disc the ray florets are slightly above as compared to the ovary position so in that case the ovary becomes inferior ovary are you following this yeah so this is this is based this is basically the concept behind this now is this the question that you can you say that you are absolutely sure about the answer no sir anyone no right yeah so since you are not absolutely sure about this answer should you be wasting time on this no no and if you are not sure about the answer should you be marking something and risking your marks over here for negative marking isn't it okay. yeah so follow that pattern okay the sequence question number 5 the sequence that controls a copy number of the linked dna in the vector is termed as what is termed as the ori site okay what is ori ori is the origin of replication isn't it srishti yeah origin of replication now origin of replication is what it is the site where dna replication begins and one origin of replication one ori site is a must when we talk about a vector dna or a plasmid that we are using for genetic engineering why because we require the copy number a good copy number since we are cloning the plasmid the plasmid should be able to exist for long in in larger numbers inside the cell okay now question number 6 which of the following is put into anaerobic sludge digester for further sewage treatment can anyone arrive at the answer yeah okay effluence of the primary treatment go to secondary treatment right then we have primary sludge floating debris and we have activated sludge now what is activated sludge activated sludge has all the components that have worked on the organic matter okay and they have devoured the organic matter destroyed the organic matter and uh, and reduced the bod okay so reduce the bod of the sewage the biological oxygen demand or the biochemical oxygen demand of the sewage has been greatly re reduced because of the activated sludge now what is happening over here since the bod is released but these themselves are uh, microorganisms isn't it so can you just let them into the oceans can you just let them into the water bodies you can't because you will be adding another amount of organic material so this is further treated where the activated sludge is destroyed and then the effluent is released out into the water bodies okay let's take a look at the next question question number 7 in which of the following techniques the embryos are transferred to assist those females who cannot conceive okay understand the question embryos are transferred to assist the females who cannot conceive now the first one is icsi what is icsi it is intracytoplasmic sperm injection so this is literally sperm injection in what manner in intracytoplasmic manner so this is a micro injection technique where the sperm is pushed into the ovum through into the cytoplasm so does this talk about transfer of embryo anywhere does this talk about transfer of embryo anywhere yes ishan it doesn't right yeah so if it's not talking about transport of embryo anywhere is this our answer it's not our answer okay gamete intrafallopian transfer okay it can be but look at the option that it is there with it yep it is icsi again isn't it yep yes, then what is c c is zygote intrafallopian transfer right okay and the other is intrauterine transfer right okay now d is again gift and zift now gift is gamete intrafallopian transfer isn't it what are we talking about we are talking about embryos so embryos are transferred where in zift and uh, iut isn't it intrauterine transfer so elimination method 
The QR is complex in a standard ECG represents what? Now this is again a direct question. Can someone give me the answer? Come on. Repolarization of ventricles? Or or Srishti, what are you saying? E. It's A, right, isn't it? See, ECG, okay, the QRS complex, the QRS, the, the QRS is a wave. It's, it's a very large wave which goes upwards, isn't it? And that basically shows the depolarization of ventricles, okay? Now, oh, very nice question. Try, uh, Citric acid cycle, TCA, tricarboxylic acid cycle. Favorite topic, isn't it? Divyan, Shrishti, what? The number of substrate level phosphorylations in one turn of the citric acid cycle is? How many substrate level phosphorylations do we see? Come on. They are just asking one turn of the uh, uh, citric acid cycle. Yeah. So, when we talk about substrate level phosphorylation, substrate level phosphorylation in citric acid cycle is one. Okay. When succinyl CoA, yes, Srishti. Yeah. So, when succinyl CoA is, con is broken down to succinic acid succinate isn't it the br uh, the the bond that is really the bond that is broken between succinyl and coa is a high energy bond which is utilized for the formation of gtp from gdp and then since gtp is unstable the energy is then passed on to the formation of atp from adp by substrate level phosphorylation okay understand the meaning of substrate level phosphorylation Substrate level phosphorylations are the phosphorylations is, or the ATP formation which is happening in places apart from the oxidative phosphorylation which takes place on the inner mitochondrial membrane. Okay. Now, next question, question number 10. Select the correct events that occur during inspiration. Okay. Now, let's, now here this is uh, a statement type question. Now, how will you come down to statement type questions? Look at the lo lo simply simply look at the statements that go hand in hand. Now, when we talk about inspiration, recall that in inspiration we need to take the air in, right? And when we are taking the air in, the volume of the intrapulmonary cavity, the intrapulmonary volume, when we want to take the air in, should be increased, isn't it? And if volume is increasing, shouldn't the pressure be less? Yeah, so let's look at these two options first. So pulmonary, so, so we have contraction of the diaphragm. Does that happen during inspiration? Yes, the diaphragm contracts and flattens down. So because of which again the volume increases. Contraction of external intercostal muscles. Does that happen? It happens, but if you are not sure about it, let's just move ahead. Pulmonary volume decreases. Now, I just said that for inspiration, pulmonary volume must increase. So, this is wrong. Intrapulmonary pressure increases. If the volume is going to increase during inspiration, the intrapulmonary pressure will be decreasing, isn't it? So, this is also wrong. Now, to state a fact, con external intercostal muscles, they contract during inspiration and they relax during expiration. The opposite of which happens for internal intercostal muscles. Remember, internal intercostal muscles and external intercostal muscles are antagonistic in nature. That means when one contracts, the other relaxes and vice versa. Okay. So, the correct options are contraction of diaphragm and contraction of external intercostal muscles. So, which of the options satisfies that 1 and 2? C. Correct? Yeah. Next, identify the correct statement concerning the human digestive system. Divyansh, come on, tell me this. Tell me the answer to this question. Mr. Divyansh Mehta. You're reading? Okay. It's not B or C. Mm -hmm. 
let's work on it okay we cannot waste more than a minute on any question vermiform appendix uh, let's talk about ileum is a highly coiled part of the so digestive system the human digestive system ileum is the highly coiled part that is the correct one let's talk about why the others are wrong okay vermiform appendix arises from the duodenum is it true no it is a blind it arises from the blind end of the cecum doesn't it yeah ileum opens into the small intestine does ileum open into the small intestine the stomach opens into the small intestine isn't it the pylorus part of the stomach opens into the small intestine that is the duodenum correct is the serosa the innermost layer of the alimentary canal anyone it's it's mucosa it's mucosa isn't it serosa is the outermost layer isn't it yes yes yeah so what is the correct answer ileum is the highly coiled part of the human digestive system is basically the correct answer over here devyansh you need to read that again yes yes now the next question yep it's from my favorite chapter photosynthesis yep 12 the oxygenation activity of rubisco enzyme in photorespiration leads to the formation of dash rubisco ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase oxygenase yep this is the enzyme recall that rubisco is the enzyme that takes carbon dioxide from the air and gives it to ribulose bisphosphate ribulose bisphosphate which is a 5 carbon compound so 5 carbon compound plus carbon dioxide forms a 6 carbon acid which is unstable which breaks down to phosphoglyceric acid now rubisco has the tendency to act as what act as an oxygenase 2 now when it acts as an oxygenase is it going to take carbon dioxide it's not so is there going to be another carbon molecule added to the system no how many carbon molecules are present with rubp that is ribulose bisphosphate five right so there is no six carbon compound forming at all okay so one molecule of six carbon compound answer is wrong second one molecule of four carbon compound and one molecule of two carbon compound here again you require six molecules of carbon do we have six molecules of carbon we don't okay i mean do we have any molecule containing six, car six carbon atoms we don't two molecules of a th uh, two molecules of a 3c compound that is three carbon compound if it's two molecules of a three carbon compound again we require a molecule of how many carbon compound how many carbon atoms six carbon atoms do we have that forming we don't have that forming so what actually happens over here is in photorespiration when oxygenation of rubisco takes place you get a three carbon compound which is phosphoglyceric acid okay and another two carbon compound which is phosphoglycolate right now your fourth option only mentions one molecule of three carbon compound right but isn't it the closest possible correct answer out of the four it's not mentioning the two carbon compound right can you understand that but all of the other options are explicitly incorrect chalo let's take a look at question number 13 which of the following pairs is of unicellular algae again a direct question akash can you answer this sabi laminarian sargasm no no b Oh, chlorella and spirulina. My bad. Yes, chlorella and spirulina is the correct answer, isn't it? Anabina is a cyanobacteria, right? Gelidium gracilaria are what? They are red algae. Laminaria and sargasm are brown algae, isn't it? Again, match the column. Let's let's try our previous trick again. Match the following columns and select the correct option. Bt cotton. What should Bt cotton go with? Yes, Fatima, that is correct. Bt cotton 
simply tells you that it is bacillus thuringiensis. Now, which of the four options satisfies A as 4? Yes, isn't it? Done. Do I need to waste my time on other aspects, other, other parts of the question? Question number 15. The plant part that consists of two generations within one within the other. Pollen grains inside the anther. Germinated pollen grain with two male gametes. The seed inside the fruit. Embryo sac inside the ovule. Now what concept will you apply here? Any idea? 12th graders. Shrishti, Fatima, Akash, Divyansh, any idea? No? Let's help you recall. Remember we studied sporophytic generation and gametophytic generation? Yes? So sporophytic generation and gametophytic generation tells us about the alternation of generation. So if I'm having a sporophyte and a gametophyte together, that means we have one generation within another. So which of that it is? Pollen grains inside the anther. Is that a sporophyte and gametophyte together? Yes, it is. Isn't it? Anther is the sporophyte. My pollen grains are the gametophytes. Germinated pollen grain with two male gametes. Pollen grain itself is a gametophyte. The seed inside the fruit. Is it a gametophyte? It is a sporophyte. These are post-fertilization structures. Embryo sac inside the ovule. Embryo sac is the haploid gametophyte, isn't it? And the ovule is the diploid sporophyte. So my answers are what? Pollen grains inside the answer, uh, anther and embryo sac inside the ovule. So 1 and 4. The answer is B. Correct? Yeah. 16. Match the following columns and select the correct option. Come on. Use the trick and tell me. I'm getting answers in the chat. What are you all so sure about? Malaria plasmodium, S studying since 10th grade, isn't it? Yeah, malaria, plas malaria plasmodium, D2, which, on, which option shows us D as 2? A, B, C, D, oh, D, yeah, okay, so D as 2, the answer is D, isn't it? Let's see if it satisfies other others, uh, components, typhoid salmonella, A3. Pneumonia, Haemophilus influenzae, correct? Four, Filariasis, Wuchereria bancrofti, right? And Malaria plasmodium. Good. Question number 17 from Molecular Basis of Inheritance. The first phase of translation is what? Srishti, your favorite chapter. First phase, <laughs> two phases of translation, isn't it? First is where we charge, where the cell charges the tRNAs, right? Transfer RNAs with the amino acid. And what is that process called as? That process is called as amino acylation of tRNA, right? Binding of mRNA to ribosome, next thing. Recognition of anticodon will be when the tRNA comes to the ribosome. Recognition of DNA molecule is the lot before, isn't it? So, amino acylation of tRNA. Nice. Question number 18. Match the following columns and select the correct option. Animal kingdom. This is completely based on animal kingdom. Yeah. So, let's take a look at it. 6 to 15 pairs of gill slits. Does it give us something specific? Let's look at something else. Heterocircle caudal fin. That means caudal fin, the fin on the tail. Does it give us something again? No. Air bladder. Air bladder. 
air bladder is a quality of ostic thighs isn't it bony fishes so c4 is there an option that gives me c4 yes c isn't it yeah so c4 is in c so what have what are we still doing we are still we are still focusing on what we are absolutely sure about right if we want to if we want to uh, confirm the other things a is what 6 to 15 pairs of gill slits and cyclostomes so what are cyclostomes cyclostomes are cyclostomata the uh, where they belong to agnatha yep sucker fishes isn't it poison sting is present in trigon trigon is what the common name is stingray another match the column and select the correct option come on you all should be able to tell me this the answer is literally shouting in your face okay chat box is active again wonderful clostridium butyricum the name itself tells us that it is giving us what butyric acid isn't it so a two are there any options that show me a as two d isn't it yes great trichoderma polysporum gives us cyclosporin a monascus purpureus gives us what a component called statin which is used as a blood cholesterol lowering agent and aspergillus niger gives us citric acid another one match the columns and select the correct option organ of corti where is organ of corti present organ of corti is present in the cochlea on the basilar membrane so located on the basilar membrane a4 there is only one option that talks about a4 which one is that a isn't it dissolution of the synaptonemal complex occurs during so the five phases of meiosis one right so leptotene is where the condensation of the chromosomes begins yep leptotene zygotene pachytin diplotene diakinesis zygotene zygotene is where the homologous chromosomes start pairing pachytin is where synaptonemal complex forms crossing over takes place and in diplotene the synaptonemal complex dissolves and what happens is the uh, chromosomes start repelling each other isn't it question number 22 plant kingdom Strobili or cones are found in Marcantia, Salvinia, Equisetum, and Teres. Okay. Now, what are strobili or cones? Strobili or cones are the spore bearing structures. See, Marcantia is what? Marcantia is a bryophyte. Yeah. Strobili or cones are majorly found in what? In pteridophytes. Now, when we talk about Teres, and other pteridophytes they have microsporophylls so they have leaves on which you have certain structures that produce spores but in other components like equisetum these leaves they combine together and they form a cone which further contains the spores and such cones are known as strobili 23 the roots that originate from the base of the stem morphology of flowering plants right what are they called as can someone give me the answer? Yes, from the base of the stem. Fibrous roots, right? When do we get fibrous roots from the base of the stem? If a plant is losing its tap root, we'll get fibrous roots and other types for what? For doing the job of the roots. Now, this is a very easy question, like straightforward, something that you have studied in 10th grade 2. So, name the plant growth regulators which upon spraying on sugarcane crop increases the length of the stem, thus increasing the yield of the sugarcane crop. Ethylin. Is ethylene a plant growth regulator? Is it a plant, uh, is it a growth promoter? It's not. Is abscisic acid a growth promoter? 
It's not. These are growth inhibitors. Cytokinin and gibberellins are the only two options. Now, cytokinins, we know that they are responsible for what? Cell division. But when we talk about gibberellins, gibberellins are responsible for increase in the internodal distance. So, if they are increasing, if they are responsible for increase in the internodal distance, wouldn't the application of gibberellins result in increase in the length of sugar canes? Yeah. So, gibberellins. Question number 25. Match the following columns and select the correct option again. Floating ribs. Come on, tell me what you all are sure about it. Answers. Come on, I'm waiting for the answers. Look for what you are absolutely sure about. Just one thing. Okay. Yeah. So, floating ribs. Floating ribs. Do the floating ribs connect to the sternum? They don't. Isn't it? They don't. The first seven pairs of ribs are connected directly to the sternum. The 8th, ninth, and 10th pairs of ribs are connected to the 7th rib. Hence, they are called as false ribs. Even though they are not connected directly to the sternum, they are still connected to the 7th rib. But the floating ribs, that is 11th and 12th pairs of ribs, are not connected to the sternum at all. They are only connected to the vertebral column. So, floating A should be 4, isn't it? Yeah. So, which of the options satisfies 4? B. Right? Someone gave that answer. Good job, people. All are answering. Identify the basic amino acid from the following. Lysine is the basic amino acid. Yep. Okay. Lysine is basic amino acid. Tyrosine is an aromatic amino acid because it has an aromatic ring in it. Valine is a neutral amino acid and glutamic acid just says acid. Yeah. So, it's an acidic amino acid. Identify the wrong statement concerning immunity. Active immunity is quick and gives a full response. Now see, the statement, the statement type of questions is where you will be taking a lot of time because you have to read, you have to understand. Yeah. Active immunity is quick and gives a full response. They are asking for a wrong statement. Re reading the first option itself, we know that it is wrong. Right, because active immunity takes a longer time to give the response, it does not give you uh, immediate immunity. Right, I mean, COVID vaccinations are going on right now. Use your idea of uh, immunity over there. So, fetuses, fetus receives some antibodies from the mother, it is an example of passive immunity. Yeah. When, f when exposed to antigen, antibodies are produced in the host body. It is called active immunity. That is correct again. When ready-made antibodies are directly given, it is called passive immunity. Yep, satisfies the B option also. So, what is wrong over here is A. Active immunity is quick and gives a full response. It's slow, actually. If the head of the cockroach is removed, it may live for a few days because... The head holds a small portion of the nervous system while the rest is situated along the ventral part of its body. The head holds a one third of the nervous system while the rest is situated along the dorsal part of its body. The supraesophageal ganglia of the cockroach are situated in the ventral part of the abdomen. No, it says supraesophageal, isn't it? Ventral part of the abdomen. No. The cockroach does not have a nervous system. Not D though is definitely wrong. Right? Now, when we talk about cockroach, okay, when we talk about cockroach, certain amount of ganglia, you know, very small part is what is present in the head, okay. Otherwise, the entire thing, it, it, has, it has a ventral nerve cord. It is ventral, it's not dorsal, okay, which is situated in its entire body, right. Now, these things over here, the answer is A, because only a very small part is present it's not even one third it's less than that that is the reason the answer is actually a now 
questions like this if you're not sure don't attempt okay yeah identify the wrong statement concerning the transport of oxygen higher h plus concentration in alveoli favors the formation of oxyhemoglobin lower pco2 partial pressure of carbon dioxide in alveoli favors the formation of oxyhemoglobin the binding of oxygen with hemoglobin is mainly related to the partial pressure of oxygen the partial pressure of carbon dioxide can interfere with o2 binding with hemoglobin yep now this is based on our uh breathing and exchange of gases and especially the oxygen dissociation curve isn't it 29 yes fatima yes yeah so the correct answer is they are asking for a wrong statement the correct answer is higher h plus concentration in alveoli favors the formation of oxyhemoglobin in alveoli the h plus concentration is low okay h plus concentration is high at the tissues okay where pco2 is also high remember that and then the final question this is very simple come on you all can give me the answer put it in the chat box if you don't want to say it out loud great good job everyone yes so the cell is metabolically active grows but does not replicate its dna yeah nuclear division takes place is is karyokinesis mitosis dna synthesis or replication takes place is where it's in the s phase in the synthesis phase which is the next phase reorganization of all cell components takes place is it is it the case in g1 phase no so when we talk about g1 phase in g1 phase the cell the cytoplasm is growing the cell is carrying out synthesis of rna synthesis of proteins and the cell is preparing for the next phase that is the s phase where dna replication will be taking place yeah so these are basically the 30 questions that i selected for discussion today from last year's neat paper now what did you all observe what was the trend 11 grade questions 12 grade questions what trend did you all observe with this yes 12 graders see these these are these are just 30 questions out of the 90 but but even even these 30 questions out of the 90 you could see that you know uh, the questions that have been asked from 11th grade there are quite a few of them yes and majorly if you look at uh, the questions uh, you have direct questions like um, you know the animal kingdom question the question number 18 it's it's just directly based on the organism and its qualities just straight up direct questions right so was the question number 22 strobili or cones are found question number 21 which is based on cell cycle cell division all are direct questions yep direct answer questions 23 which is from morphology the roots that originate from the base of the stem straight up factual direct questions right 24th is also from plant growth and development are you seeing the trend here yeah so understand how you should actually go forward with uh, you know uh looking at questions understand how you are going to save your time how you are going to work on it to save your time that is that is that is very important yeah so unless and un un uh, unless and until you are absolutely sure about the answer do not mark it and do not waste more than a minute on any question this will come only through practice yeah practice or uh, practice answering on omr sheets you will also get a hang on how quickly you can fill up the circles and you will also get a hang on correctly filling the circles yeah there are certain rules to that there are certain precautions you are supposed to take so work on all those factors so 
I'm taking doubts now. If there are any doubts, you can ask directly or put it in the chat box. I'm waiting. Okay. So, if there are no doubts, I'm concluding the session. The next session will take uh, more questions. Okay, and uh, we will we will take the same we will take questions from NEET 2020 paper itself. Okay, and we shall discuss them in a bit detailed manner. Fine. Yeah. So, I'll see you all next time. Have a nice day till then, and enjoy your week. Bye bye.